Hello everyone, my name is Masbaba Charles and welcome back to another Apostles of Mochinjiko podcast and thank you very much to everyone who's managed to watch or to listen to all the previous podcasts and you've managed to engage with us. Thank you for your views, for your likes and for your comments and we hope that they've been of some help to you. And for this week we wish to discuss the topic of Zimbabwe is a spiritual country. For some of you that have watched the previous videos that we were done and the one that was done in Shona by the speaking of the Holy Spirit and he was just teaching us about how Zimbabwe is a spiritual country. For some of you that might not know, in the olden days I remember our fathers would tell us how Zimbabwe used to shake at the end of the year and this is how the older generation knew that the year was coming to an end. The whole country would shake or you sometimes you'd hear the the roars of lions or mondoro as we call them in Shona. And it was just this sort of events that signified how great and how spiritual the country is. And just speaking from cases which pretty much every Zimbabwean would know of where you'd go into mountains and people would get lost for days simply because they might have said the wrong word or it was not the time to go there and or it was not their place and they should have seeked permission from the residents of that mountain first before they went into there. And some people, you'd hear stories of people being lost for years and were never found. This is just some of the, uh, the amazing and the holy places that are found within Zimbabwe and the, it shows the significance of how holy of a country it is, even to the point that when we came down as people from Tanzania of Guruwuswa, people would come down and they would be led and they were told by the spirits that the land that you're going is a land that is holy and flowing of milk and honey and it is a chosen land. So the land of Zimbabwe that we have now is a place that was chosen by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit even said that I want to make you the back into the breadbasket of Africa that you were. I want when people to see you to be like the Switzerland of Africa. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying. And it's saying that if you come back to me, I will show you what needs to be done. If you listen to me, I will tell you what needs to be done in order for you to retrieve your glory, for you to go back to where you were before. And the Holy Spirit made a prophecy and it said that I see in Zimbabwe there's going to be a baboon that's going to walk in town. And you're not going to know where this creature has come from. But when it happens, and it will happen, I want you to come back and to ask to me what does it mean. And the Holy Spirit further elaborated and said, Do you know that... At the end of your liberation struggle, there was a baboon that also walked in town near the end. And you people did not know, but after that, there was a major shift. And you were able to overcome and to able to win the struggle. And the Holy Spirit, so now that this baboon is going to walk again, tell me what does it mean? Or come to me and I will tell you what it means. So the Holy Spirit made this prophecy and surely it came true. But the people who were told did not come back to ask the Holy Spirit what did it mean and what did it mean for the country. So these were the sort of stuff that explains how Zimbabwe is a spiritual country and if we are to overcome our struggles and the things that we are going through, we need to be able to trust more in the Holy Spirit and to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. And... If if you just look in Zimbabwe, there's there's so many prophets, there's so many people who claim to speak with the word of God, but the, the solutions and the troubles of people, the, the the troubles just keep on increasing. But the Holy Spirit is saying, "Come, so that we might speak, and I will tell you of the secrets that are in Zimbabwe." For example, if you look, we have holy places such as Matopos. These are places which you know, voices of God would be heard to speak within mountains and in the holy areas. People could witness miracles. 
And the Holy Spirit was saying, but do you know that these places have been defiled? You have lost the traditions and the ways that you were told to keep these places holy. And you allow people, whether they are tourists or people who are just coming from Harare and they don't know these places and they just do whatever they want, whether if it's their drinking there or in some places where you have to take off your shoes and they don't and they have cameras, that kind of stuff, that you are no longer treating those places as holy. But do you know that it has an effect on your country because you have those spiritual pillars of your country that you have. But you are unable to take care of them. And the Holy Spirit said, for example, you had this place which belonged to your ancestors and belonged to your people. But you allowed someone who was a colonizer, for example, Cecil Rhodes, and he was buried in that place. And the Holy Spirit said, do you know the significance of that? Do you understand what it means that this was a place for your ancestors and a had of great significance to you as people? But then... You had a colonizer that was buried there. Do you know what it means? So the Holy Spirit said, come and speak to me so that I can reveal to you of the things that were lost and the stuff that you do not understand. Because surely Zimbabwe is such a spiritual place. Just thinking about it and the stories that I have heard and the amazing things that I personally have seen that have been done by the Holy Spirit or that have been done by the spiritual people in Zimbabwe just shows you the amazing works that we are able to do. And with that, I truly wish to help people to better understand how we can move forward as a country if we want to help the work of God in order to do. And I strictly just say Zimbabwe, but... I know in the future, the desire of the Holy Spirit is for it to be known worldwide and for everyone in order to see the works of, of God. And this is just amazing because I remember listening to, this, to the videos of the Holy Spirit in Botswana and it spoke of the secrets of Botswana and it said, do you know I see a lady that was here? And do you know that the kingdom that you guys have, that this woman, there's a key that she has in order for you to be able to be fully liberated. And this just show, and the Holy Spirit said, this is just a small little introduction to the book that my father has given me to read. This is just a small introduction to the works that I have been given to perform. That if you were able to come to me so that we can sit down and that we can talk, then you will be able to overcome the troubles that you have. So this just shows the potential that the Holy Spirit has and that we are unable to fully utilize it or to fully use it unless we are able to appreciate the, sp the spirituality that can be found within our country, to appreciate it and to be proud of it and to not let people take it away from us. Our country is not evil the holy places of our country is, is not the places that we should just ignore and say they bear of no importance simply because we were told. But we should understand the importance that this th these places have in our history to us as people and to us as people of God. We should understand this if we want to move forward as a country and seek for better understanding from the Holy Spirit and from the Lord of what needs to be done in order for us to overcome. So I say this so that we are able to move forward as a country. Let us seek the wisdom and the understanding of the Holy Spirit. And when we do not know, let us seek men of God that truly understand the, the, the desire of, of what God wants from us. And once we know what God wants from us, let us strive in all our abilities and all of our resources in mind and heart in order to accomplish what the Lord wants from us. And with that, I hope that this podcast has been of some help to you. It was just a small introduction into the spirituality that can be found in Zimbabwe. Truly, the area is broad and there's so much more I could say, but I wish that we we're able to discuss more. And if you do have any questions that you have, please do not hesitate to contact us and we will do our best to answer your questions. And with that, I say thank you and glory be to God.